So in today's video, we are going to be discussing all things Jake Young and what is next for the Bradford City frontman. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 70 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on Jake Young. Do you think he's good enough to be playing for Bradford? City and what do you think should happen with him next should he be loaned out should he be permanently sold we've had a couple of updates from Simon Parker and as of right now Jake Young is still a Bradford City first team player obviously we signed him last summer gave him a three-year contract with the option of a further year after agreeing a compensation package I believe with Forest Green Rovers then he played the first couple of weeks months of the season really and then after from October onwards I don't think we have ever saw him then in a match day squad he was sent out on loan in January to Barrow where he didn't really hit the ground running now he's back with Bradford City he didn't look like he traveled with the boys to Spain or if he did he wasn't involved in any of the training pitches or at least I certainly couldn't see him so I'm not really too sure what's going on with Jake Young he hasn't been involved in either match day squad at all against Berry or in our pre-season game against Getafe over in Spain so not no idea what's going on with Jake Young. It seems like we're trying to maybe force him out the door rather than just get letting him have the opportunity to try and fight for his place back into the team, which I never really agree with. Something seems to have gone on behind the scenes. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing everything at Jake Young. Make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you're new as well. And let's get into it. Before we get into today's video, I do just want to give a quick shout out to all of our channel members, especially our tier three channel members, B Davies 211, Kai Pal Freeman, AJW, and most recently. Recently, David Dunbar. Thank you very much for your support and if you're interested in the channel membership scheme the prices have been massively reduced from what they were last season so please make sure to go check that out if you are in a position to do so but we'll take it back then to the 2nd of June when Simon Parker put out an article saying here's the latest situation with out of favour Bradford City striker Jake Young. The article at the time it does then read Bantam striker Jake Young on way out for next season. Jake Young has been advised to find a new club over the summer the TNA understands. Young will return at four pre-season with the rest of the squad but his chances of playing again are likely to hinge on a move elsewhere. The out of favour City striker still has two more years to run on the contract he signed when joining for an undisclosed fee from Forest Green Rovers last May but he has not featured in Mark Hughes' plans since October and that situation is not expected to change. Young scored four goals at the start of last term two in the league and a double against Sheffield Wednesday in the Papa John's Trophy. The 21 year old fell out of favour after his last league start at Tranmere in mid-September with his only first team action after that limited to two at Papa John's Trophy outings against Leicester City's under-21s and Burton Albion at the following month. Young joined Barrow on loan in the January window for the second half of the season but the move to Cumbria failed to revive his fortunes. He only started five games in 17 appearances at four peak wild side and failed to score. City are likely to be in the market for a new forward and that eventually turned out to be Tyler Smith I do believe but reports this week claim that one of those being monitored was Dan Adji and obviously he has since signed for Leighton Orient and then it just goes on to talk about Dan Adji a little bit. City are looking to run a leaner and meaner squad for this upcoming campaign and the situation remains unclear at this stage about the future of some of the other fringe players. The club are obviously at the time are waiting to find out whether Gilead and Rydalg were going to sign their new contracts. Obviously a lot has happened since 2nd of June. We're now on the 18th of July. Yesterday on the 17th of July, Simon Parker put out another article saying, a quote here, saying he needs to go out on loan and take an opportunity and show what he can do. Mark Hughes' update on the Jake Young situation. This was obviously yesterday, so let's now read that article. The article does then read, a Bantam striker Jake Young has turned down some loan offers. Jake Young has rejected a couple of loan moves after being left off City's trip to Spain. So yeah, as expected, as of, now that I've actually read this properly, he did not travel with the squad to Spain. Mark Hughes admits the out-of-favour striker still needs to look elsewhere to get playing again. I feel that Jake probably needs to go out on loan for his own benefit, said the Bantam's chief. He's had opportunities that he hasn't taken. He has his own reasons for that. If we bring in a few more players, that's going to stop his pathway to the team even more so. Just for his own playing position, he needs to go out on loan and take an opportunity and show what he can do. We'll have to wait and see what happens. At the moment, he didn't want to take the opportunity
opportunities that he's had. Young played 12 times early last season, seven of them starts. He scored twice in the league and two more against Sheffield Wednesday in the Football League trophy. His last City outing was in the trophy defeat against Burton Albion in October. He was loaned to Barrow in the January but failed to impress and did not score a goal. With two games in two days now, obviously one today was against Bolton Wanderers in a behind closed doors frame. We actually lost that 5-2, which is not horrendous because I think Bolton are a really good side and I think they get into the top six in League One next season. But obviously conceding six goal, uh, conceding five goals is never nice. And now we're expected to play uh, the younger uh, players tomorrow against Park Avenue, which I don't think is really fair considering the game was advertised as a first team match. That seems a little bit stupid to me, to be honest with you, especially when the fans have you know paid to watch the first team to then see the kids show up. I think he's a little bit disrespectful in my opinion, but it'll still be a good test and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that at the time was an unnamed opponent, but it has still been confirmed that that was Bolton Wanderers. And then obviously on Wednesday tomorrow, that will be our annual trip to Bradford Park Avenue, where Young could get a run out against Park Avenue, according to Simon Parker. He has been given a shirt number when they were announced last week. It was actually the last outfield player shirt number. He got 28 out of 29, and 29 was obviously third choice goalkeeper Heath Richardson, but appears to have little prospect of featuring in the upcoming campaign. Asked about further potential outgoings, Hugh said, we'll see how we are. We've lost for Dan Oliver for a significant amount of time, so we'll have to make sure that we're covered. I think, wasn't it just like last week he was saying we weren't going to bring someone else in for short-term injury, so maybe Oliver's injury is even longer than two months, which is gutting for him because he's just not had a break, really, at Bradford City. There might be a few more going out, but it's not as easy to do that it is, as it is sorry, to sometimes bring them in. So there is a little bit of an update. Mark Hughes clearly wants him to go out and get that regular first-team football. Jake Young has turned down them offers so far. Potentially, he might not have had the, uh, the level that he wants to play at. Maybe he still wants to prove himself at League 2. His offers might have been from the National League. But the fact that something clearly to me seems to have gone on. Now, personally for me, I don't think Jake Young is that bad. But the problem with Jake Young is he was either an 8 out of 10 or a 3 out of 10. He either played really well, scored some great goals, or was non-existent, gave the ball away in stupid areas, just had a really poor game. There were a few games where he got subbed off at half-time, and that was the problem with Jake Young, was consistency. If he was consistently performing to his best, week not even week in, week out, just a, a larger majority of the time, I think he'd be comfortably in the squad and potentially starting up front next season with Andy Cook. But because he was so inconsistent, you can understand the frustration that he got from Mark Hughes and statistically Young was okay last season but some of them performances away at Colchester and Tranmere were probably a reason as to why he wasn't featuring too much in the matchday squads. Now last season in League 2 in total Jake Young made 24 appearances for both Bradford City and Barrow 8 starts in total averaging 34 minutes per game. He scored 2 goals averaging a goal every 413 minutes with a 7% goal conversion rate. He missed 2 big chances averaging 1.3 shots per game and 0.4 shots on target per game he averaged 15.3 touches per he created two big chances with a 54% passing accuracy. That was probably a big reason as to why Mark Hughes didn't really play him too much. A 54% passing accuracy could have potentially been hindered by his time at Barrow, but that is absolutely shocking and certainly doesn't suit Mark Hughes' style of play. Defensively, really poor with just 0.1 interceptions per game, 0.4 tackles per game and 0.4 clearances per game as well. He averaged 0.8 dribbles per 90, 47% of them have been successful, which is not bad to be fair for a winger. And he averaged 2.1 at total duels per 90. 1.6 on the ground winning 39% of them and 0.5 in the air winning only 20% of them which for someone who's over 6 foot, only winning winning every 5 of your headers is not exactly great he also picked up 3 yellow cards throughout his time last season in the league in league 2 he averaged a 6.56 according to sofa score but in the football league trophy he averaged a 7.27 so I think for me personally Jake Young does need to go out on loan even if it's just until January because I don't really see where he currently fits into this squad we're clearly not going to play winger so he's going to be a striker as of right now I mean with Oliver's injury maybe he'd get a little bit more of an opportunity but I think Smith's ahead of him Cook's obviously ahead of him and a different type of striker Matt Derbyshire's probably ahead of him at this moment in time you know what you're going to get with Derbyshire he's consistent he might not be a world beater but he's a consistent 6 or a 7 out of 10 every time that he does play and Jake Young he's probably ahead of Dylan Youngby right now but I'll be interested to see if he does play tomorrow night against Bradford Park Avenue I'm going to leave it there though for today's video if you have enjoyed please 
please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could join it, 70 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know what do you think should happen with Jake Young. Do you think he should be sold? Do you think he should be loaned? Or do you think he should be getting opportunities in the first team? Like what I say, I think a loan move as of right now will probably be best for all parties and potentially come back in January and kick on with Bradford City in the second half of the campaign. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon for another one. Peace.